I'm here in Copenhagen, Denmark at UDS, and I'm with Pete Grainer. Pete, you're the QA team manager. Um, recently, Q quality has always been um, a priority with the Ubuntu release, but over the last couple cycles, it's that's all we hear about is quality, quality, quality. How are you and your team um, influencing the qu the overall quality um, of Ubuntu? Well, I mean, this started, I think, well, we talked about this a couple cycles ago. Um, our quality traditionally had been nothing more than really bug triaging and uh, mobilizing the community around uh, image testing, you know, making sure the image was installable. Um, over the last year, we formed uh, Inside Canonical, a QA team, and the primary focus is around automated testing. So in that time frame, we've set up uh, several labs. We've put a significant amount of infrastructure in to allow for automated testing, remote access, and things of that nature. So this cycle is really where we're starting to see, uh, or actually at the point where we can really start taking advantage of all those, uh, the preparatory work from the last few cycles. So for example, uh, some of the major initiatives we're taking on this time are um, uh, Unity stack testing. So we are going to be uh, working on Unity itself and automating it. So you'll see things like um, whatever you would get on the default desktop. We'll check each and every item to make sure that it works. So if you click on Firefox, for example, that we know Firefox comes up, it shows you the proper menus, it displays a web page, things like that. Um, and that, that's the whole Unity stack. So that's Unity, Nux, which is the input layer, uh, which deals with mice, keyboards, joysticks, whatever all the way down through Compies, which is the compositor, which gives you the pretty effects and blurs and things like that. Um, along with that, you know, we've long known that there's been some performance issues around that same stack, you know, Unity and Friends. So um, there's a major initiative that my team is working with uh, Jason Warner and the desktop team on to um, instrument and profile the whole stack. So we would be doing things like um, exposing the dash and watching how long it takes to appear and monitoring that every day. And if there's, uh, for example, patches that hit trunk that cause that to slow down, we'll know on the next daily image and we can figure out why it got slow and fix it and make it better. Along with that, we'll have profiling numbers so we can look at what parts of the stack are slow and then the developers can optimize on those. Um, I mean, we've got a, a large, large number of initiatives. Um, probably the biggest is the change to how we're going to be uploading packages to the archive. So what that means is traditionally developers could take um, a package and upload it directly to the archive. Within a certain amount of time, it would hit and it would be available um, you know, in the daily images or as uh, if you did an update of your system uh, while running a development release. The problem is those packages weren't really tested. Uh, they go through some basic testing at the build and compile time, but not really anything post. So what we're doing now is uploading everything to um, a pocket or a, a repo called Proposed. At that point, it will have a number of automated tests run on it. Uh, it checks everything from uh, installability, upgradability, does it remove properly, um, we'll run all the auto package tests, which are uh, actually configured inside the package itself. If any of those things fail to include it actually building, it gets rejected, a bug is filed, and it's not allowed to go to, to anyone further down the line. If it passes, it goes into what's called the proposed pocket. At that point, we do integration testing on it. So that will be having the latest working ISO, putting those packages on top of it, and then running integration testing, which would be user interface testing. This could be, uh, it depends upon what part of the Ubuntu we're talking about, but there's a large number of tests. If there's any critical bugs, and by critical we mean things that would affect things like the desktop coming up, um, not booting, um, you know, um, you're not getting the login screen, things like that, it would get rejected. Normal bugs are okay as long as they're not um, you know, really critical. They don't need to be fixed at that point. If they're critical, it gets rejected and it has to go all the way back through the cycle to the beginning. If it passes, it goes into the archive. And at that point, people can upload from it and the next daily image will be made from those packages. 
the biggest change other than the QA being inserted in the middle is the fact that we're accelerating the speed at which developers can iterate over bug fixes. So currently, depending upon where and what time of the day and what's going on, um, that can take up to 24 hours, some cases longer. We're gonna get that down to an hour. And that means if there's a bug, the developer gets almost real-time feedback on it failed, then they can figure out why it failed, revert a patch, fix a patch, whatever the case may be, and re-upload. So they can conceivably get through, in a normal work day, uh, probably six or seven iterations um, of that process. That's the, those are the things that kill us in Ubuntu, when you get a daily image and you can't do anything because it's broken. You can't install or your upgrade breaks everything on your desktop. And this prevents that. So for those people who, who really, um, not only you folks at, at Canonical, but those end users who really dog food the dailies, um, is it gonna, they, they find those issues when they happen, but it's gonna be a little less painful for those who choose to dog food um, because of this new? Yeah, I mean, the mantra is, um, is installable image every day. We don't guarantee it's bug free, obviously, but what we're, we are saying is there should be nothing in Ubuntu that prevents you from doing other work. So if you're testing, um, you know, you might have LibreOffice is not working, but the desktop is still there and testable, or Firefox is not working, but you can still do other things. Um, there's, just, I, there's just no way we can get to that level of quality at this point. I mean, that's what we're striving for, but we're taking the sort of the you know, crawl, walk, run approach. So right now we're, we're kind of like that toddler, you know, kind of wobbling around on the table, you know, holding on to it. So I suspect by 1404, you're gonna see, by the next LTS, you're gonna see um, far better quality and you're gonna see the development cycle for the developers speed up exponentially. Uh, we've put another. Uh, we've put a large number of things in place, um, you know, to make make all these things happen. So there's a lot, you know, a lot of major initiatives. A lot of them aren't really community focused because they deal with back end infrastructure um, inside canonical data centers. But um, the developers, the community developers, will feel the impact almost immediately once this is rolled out. So as you look at um, quality improving, and typically. Quality is really stressed around the release milestones and, and final release, but you're moving to that daily, um, that daily release. But not only that, when you look at quality across the release and release being the key word here, how is, how are you or, or your team approaching the release cycle? Is it just with desktop? We've heard about mobile devices. We've heard about um, TV. We've heard about tablets. We've heard about all, all these different things within right. the Ubuntu space. How does what you and your team affect the whole? So as the whole right now, we test on x86 pretty extensively in an automated fashion. Um, the server, uh, OpenStack, Moss, Juju, we're all tested in the data center you know, every day. Um, desktop is pretty much the same way. We're lacking a lot of graphical testing, but that's one of the initiatives this time is, is fixing that. Uh, we have a system called Autopilot that is um, going to be employed quite heavily um, to do a lot of this uh, push button graphical type testing. Um, but on the mobile front, um, we've produced ARM for a, you know, large, well, several years now, but it's been in one sort of form or another. Um, there's a lot of community supported variants like the AC100 uh, laptops, the Panda boards, the Beagle boards, things like that. We're really trying to make what we're calling our reference platforms, which I assume you're alluding to the Nexus 7. Um, we're trying to make those first class citizens and the Ubuntu archive or architecture uh, hierarchy. So my team has the mandate of making every test that we run, that we would run on any other architecture, run on the Nexus 7 and Panda as well, because that's our current, uh, our, our previous uh, reference. So with that in mind, um, ARM is quite a different animal in terms of how you do things. So there's a lot of engineering effort underway to um, you know, 
un unstick some pretty hard problem areas, especially with devices like the Nexus 7 where it's really a consumer grade device. It's not a development board. We don't have uh, headers or um, you know the things you would typically see on a board to to do development on. So we have to do a lot of our case cracking and soldering and things like that to get all this to work. But uh, the goal is whatever we run for desktop and server Ubuntu will run on those platforms. It's all exciting. Um, UDS always brings out. Um, not only the goals for each team not and, and what you're planning on doing for the next cycle but it also always seems to bring out um as you're about a year out from the next lts all the stuff that everybody's looking to land in 1404 um, or the next uh, lts what is it that you're looking forward to as as the manager or as, as a team? What are you looking at at 13.04 and then into 14.04? I think probably for me the most, um, obviously all the quality stuff is really exciting and you know it's necessary to really make Ubuntu a, you know, a great operating system. You know It's great, but it needs to be better. We can always do better. Um, I find things that my team views themselves not only as uh, quality engineers, you know, making sure things work and file bugs and you know, validate that they get fixed, but we view ourselves as accelerators to the developers. The faster we can do our job, the faster we can find bugs, report them, work with the developers to get them fixed, the more fixes we can get in Ubuntu. And that's my team's primary responsibility. And as an overall, the engineering team, uh, Ubuntu Engineering, we're really looking to figure out how to accelerate everyone's developer experience. And the, the word velocity is used a lot. Uh, one of the things we've done this cycle is we've removed all our alpha milestones and we've removed a beta out of the schedule. Every time we would do that, we effectively shut down development for a week while we, you know, archive was frozen, you couldn't upload anything, images were being built, images were being tested that's a week of time lost. And when you add that up, that comes up to four weeks in the development cycle. So we've given that back. And the only reason we could do that was by the quality initiatives that we've put in place to ensure we have a daily working installable ISO or you know, image every day. Um, you know, some of the other things um, that you know, are really you know, accelerators are um, you know, we talked about just a little bit about you know the new upload process and all the things that are there. So it's really that's how you know my team views themselves. They're 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 more about giving the engineering teams um, performance accelerators, just allowing them to work faster and better. And by extension, that just flows down through to the community. So um, it's uh, it's really good and exciting work. Speaking of, of community, I know that you've mentioned your automated testing and having seen uh, um, some of the your lab, because I was able to visit uh, up there in Massachusetts and Lexington and, and see that, that lab and, and how you're um, operating there. What can the community do outside of the automated testing? I know on the Canonical community team, um, Nick Skaggs, I believe, is, is heading that up. How does he work with you all, and how can people get involved with the manual testing? Well, it's actually, they can help with uh, automated testing as well. So um, Nick is our community coordinator. He's on the community team, and he, um, he tries to harness the power of the community and focus it on um, repeated and consistent manual testing. So. Previously, one of the reasons we could get rid of the, the milestones, the alphas and the beta, was because um, Nick has started a two-week quality cadence initiative with the community. So every two weeks, they take an image, and the entire community, all the testers and the Ubuntu testing group and everything, they jump on it, and they just beat it up and file bugs. And those go right to the top of our incoming queue. We look at them, triage them, and, and we work on them. Um, along with that, um, well, as I was saying previously, when we had the alphas, that's the only time you got manual testing, which is about uh, five every five or six weeks in our current or our previous schedule. Um, that only gave us, you know, five c 
consolidated testing points, which wasn't good. Doing it every two weeks, you know, we're getting approximately 13 now. So we're getting a lot more test coverage than we ever used to have. So Nick runs a really good process for writing test cases. In fact, those test cases are what we use um, as the template for our automated cases where we can automate. So by all means, the community can get involved with Nick and, and help write test cases. It's uh, very simple, it's easy, and you know, folks that really want to help, that's a great place to start. Um, but on the automated front, um, so the, the harness that drives most of our automated testing is called um, Utah. It's the Ubuntu uh, automatic test framework, or architecture, or whatever we call it. Um, it's packaged in the archive. You can download it, and they've been running sessions all week here. Um, I think we had three two-hour sessions showing developers how to write automated test cases. And the nice thing about it is what you're using when you use that package is the exact same thing that we use in the lab. It allows you to deploy your tests on VMs, on bare metal, um, you know, however you want to do it. And you know that if you give us that test case and it's a good test case, we're just going to drop it in our lab and it will run. And it's that simple. So it's very easy. Um, I've, in fact, the session I sat in on, I watched people that never touched test cases before, never written one. They had test cases up and running within a 30 minute part of the session. So, you know, we definitely encourage people to uh, look at that if you're more developer focused and want to write code, uh, test code and help out, that's a great place to do it. Well, Pete, thank you so much for sitting down um, with me here at UDS.